Peace, Baptist family, friends, and guests. These are your announcements for the week of Sunday, July 9th, 2023. If you're interested in joining the worship team, please see Maria Bates, our Minister of Music, after worship service or contact her at 513-652-1273 or Maria Bates at 0725 at gmail.com. The NAACP block party will take place on Saturday, July 15th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Samuel Lock Park on Reading Road and Rockdale Avenue. This is the front yard of South Avondale Elementary, and this is a free, family-friendly event. We will have communion on Sunday, July 16th. If we'll be joining virtually, please have your elements prepared at the beginning of worship. Please save the date. The Women of Peace will be taking a day trip to Louisville, Kentucky to shop at Matthew Shopping Mall on September 30th. There are many other amenities for fun and fellowship. We will travel by charter, and the cost is $50. If you are interested, please contact Angie Brown for more details. Be praying for Thomas Connor as he attends his first mission trip. This week, he'll be traveling to Dayton, Ohio, where he will spend the week teaching vacation Bible school and leading prayer for children of refugees from South Sudan, Burundi, and Eritrea. He's very excited. We want to keep him lifted as he shares Christ with others. And be praying for all unmentioned prayer requests for healing and bereavement. God is omniscient and omnipresent. He knows what all our needs are and is always with us. And let's celebrate our July birthdays. Happy birthday goes out to Joey Jacobs, Cherie Lee, Hannah Rice, Milton Wingfield, and Jacob Brain. Dear God, we we thank you in advance for your word that will go forth today. And knowing that the sun, S-O-N, will always come out tomorrow. Now, God, have your way. Just now, in Jesus' name, amen. No, the title of the sermon is The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow. The Bible declares that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. A little girl named Annie who had the audacity of hope and an unwavering faith exemplified that passage of scripture. You see, Annie grew up during World War II and she found herself living in the Hudson Street Orphanage with other orphans who had lost their way and who had lost their hope. And on top of all of that, they were being abused and misused by the staff of the orphanage. But somehow, in the midst of all that Annie and the others were going through, Annie exuded and exemplified an unwavering faith and a hope that would carry her through to victory. Annie, this hope that she exuded not only for herself, but for those who were orphans along with her. My daughter, Adria, When she was a little girl, she loved this movie, Annie. She told me that the movie Annie inspired her not only for the songs and the singing, but because Annie always managed to see the best in people and the best in her circumstances. Annie also thought most highly of people and believed that people could be the very best they could be. And finally, she had this hope 
because Annie had an unwavering hope that was once realized in the end of the story. My brothers and sisters, do you have that kind of hope? Do you have a hope that no matter what's going on in your life, the sun will come out tomorrow? I need to say something to you here. If you don't hear anything else I say, you need to take this with you. Regardless of what your present reality is in life, we have a promise from God that the sun, S-U-N, will come out tomorrow. But more than that, we have a glorious promise that the sun, S-O-N, will come out tomorrow. But how many of you know that we live in a world full of darkness? And they don't know necessarily that the sun will come out tomorrow. And that's where you and I come in. And that's where we find ourselves in the text. The book of John begins like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it says, and nothing that was made was made without him. And then he goes on to say, and this light was the light of men. And this light shines in the darkness. But the darkness comprehend or was not overcoming the light. My brothers and sisters, even on our cloudiest day, the sun is shining. In the state of Washington, where it rains over 340 days a year, and they see very little sunshine, the sun is still shining. And regardless of what you and I go through in life, regardless of what our lives look like and our reality is, the sun is shining. But the question is, how will those who are in darkness know that the sun is shining, that the sun will shine and come out tomorrow. How will they know? Beloved, this, this text, can I give you the backdrop first? This text literally starts in chapter 3. You see, Jesus met a man there named Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews. And the Bible says this Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And he wanted to know if Jesus was who he had heard that he was. And then we move a little further and then in verse 5, it says, Peter and John, James and John, were going up to worship. And they entered this colonnade, this temple, if you will. We know it as the place Bethesda. The word Bethesda means house of mercy. Can I stop and 
parenthetically insert right here, the church ought to be a house of mercy. And anyone who comes here ought to find people who are received or obtain mercy and who are willing to give and offer others that hope and that mercy. But let's be real. If you've been in church any amount of time, there was a time when if a young lady somehow got pregnant, the church, that is the Baptist church, would parade her before the whole church and expect her to ask forgiveness. And that's where we find ourselves in the text. This lady, who is a woman of the night, it says she has been brought before Jesus, caught in the very act of adultery. And Jesus was expecting the church to be the church. And y'all say, I don't see that. It says the Pharisees and the scribes, those religious people of the day, Jesus was expecting them to be like him and be people of mercy and forgive this woman and let her go on her way. But no, they were condemning the woman. The Bible says there's there now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It wasn't the issue of the woman being caught in adultery, but rather the church who was unforgiving, unloving, and unwilling to show mercy. My brothers and sisters, can I share this with you? That the church is required is commanded, is expected by God to model Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, took a whole different attitude toward this woman. Y'all gonna walk with me through the text? The text says this, and I'm again at verse 53. It says that they each went to their own home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. My brothers and sisters, our first point of truth is this. If we are going to show others that the sun will come out tomorrow. We must get rested and shine by sharing the gospel with others. We must get rested. You say, I don't see that. Verse 1 says, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Jesus only went to the Mount of Olives for a couple of things. To pray, to be refreshed, and to get some rest. My brothers and sisters, 
We can't share the gospel and give others hope that the sun will come out tomorrow if we don't get our rest. Oh, y'all, y'all not hearing me. You won't share the gospel because you won't have the right timing. You see, it ain't every day that necessarily that you're going to share the gospel, but you must be in tune with the Spirit of God that you know the right time to share the gospel. And then you must have been rested so that you don't have no attitude in sharing the gospel. Did you hear what I said? You can't act like Jesus and be tired. <laughs> you got to get some rest. The Bible says it is a sin to wake up early and go to bed late. Did y'all know that? You need to get some rest so that when the opportunity arises to share the gospel with someone who is walking and living in darkness, you can tap into the Holy Spirit and say, I know that the sun will come out tomorrow. Why? Not because somebody told me, but because one day I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore. And I was very deeply staying within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me. Now safe am I. The songwriter said, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Get rested so that you shine by sharing the gospel with others. If you don't have a King James or New King James or a few other translations of the Bible, you will see that John chapter 7, verse 53, and all the way through chapter 8, verse 11, were not original part of the Bible. That is, the original Greek manuscripts were not a part of John's gospel. But how many of you know that all of God's word is not printed in 66 books? <laughs> and Jesus did to this young woman just what he did to you and I. That is, Jesus saw the opportunity and he intervened in the situation. That is, he stepped in to a situation and put a stop and halted what could have been. Do y'all know where y'all could be right now? If Jesus had intervened in your life, Jesus intervened into my life. Jesus intervened in your life. And he did it on his time. Because the Bible says, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem those who were under the law. And we might become the sons of God. My brothers and sisters, God is bigger than what we call the Bible. I, I need to say that again. God is bigger. 
wiser and greater than what's in the 60th books. How do I know? Because John said it. He said, all that is written in these books was is not all the miracles and the great things John has done. John 20, verse 30 and 31. He said, but these signs were written that you might believe that Jesus is God and that beside him there is no other. I need you to know today the Bible says that we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But do you know they're one? They are one. Jesus has always been there from the beginning. So we must first get rested so that the Son so that we shine by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Secondly, we must get reborn so that we shine by showing the gospel to others. Get reborn. Get reborn. He told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Not of human beings, but you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Look at our text with me. It says they brought the young woman to Jesus. Verse 3. And that the woman was caught in adultery. It says they sought to stone her. Verse 5. It says, but Jesus bent down, stooped over, if you will, and began writing in the ground. And Jesus stood back up and he said, he who was without sin cast the first stone. Jesus bent down again and continued writing in the ground. Jesus, being all-knowing, no doubt, knew everyone that was standing before him. He knew every last sin that they'd ever committed. And guess what? He knows every last sin that you and I committed. Even the very sin that we committed may be on our way to worship today. And you say, I didn't commit no sin. But you drove by someone in darkness. I didn't commit no sin today. But you drove by someone who was hungry. I didn't commit no sin today. But you drove by coming to the house of worship. Someone who needed a helping hand. So these. People, the Bible says, the text says, from the oldest to the youngest, began to depart one by one. Which is why we must be born or reborn again. You and I cannot tell, cannot share that the sun will always come out tomorrow 
unless we know that and always remember that, except Jesus came into our lives, there go you and I. We must be born again. That is to say we must have a new way of thinking, a new way of acting, a new way of loving, a new way of being compassionate. We can't judge the young man that walks in here sagging. I'm talking about his pants hanging down. We can't judge the young lady who walks in here who's showing too much leg. We can't judge our brother or our sister about whom we've heard things that don't line up with the word. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you and I must be born again. That is, we must be like Jesus and model Jesus and tell that brother or that sister that the sun will come out tomorrow. Maybe you don't remember when you used to come to church and your skirt was too short. Or maybe you don't remember when you came to church as a young man and church was the last thing on your mind. You came to see the girl that you wanted to pursue. My brothers and sisters, we all have fallen short of the glory of God. But I need to tell you this place we call the house of prayer is a hospital. We all sick and we all in need of a savior. And so we have no right to play judge or jury over someone's life. That's what condemnation is. Judgment is you calling an apple an apple. Condemnation is you declaring sentence or passing sentence on that person for being a rotten apple. Did y'all hear what I said? But you don't have a heaven or a hell to put nobody in. But you do have a word of reconciliation. Y'all do know that we are ministers, the Bible says, in 2 Corinthians, we are ministers of reconciliation. And not only are we ministers, but the Bible says we have been given the word or the message of reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And he says, now we are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador, one who may not love everything about the United States, but will tell somebody else it's the greatest place in the world. Ambassadors for Christ. Maybe that don't ring true with you. How about this? The Bible says that you are a chosen generation. A holy nation. A peculiar people that once yourselves walked in darkness who were called out of that darkness into his marvelous light to show forth the praises of him that called you out of that darkness. And you who are once not a people are now 
the people of God. And you who have once not obtained mercy have now obtained mercy. That means that everyone in this room, including myself, we got from God what we did not deserve. That is, God held back what we did deserve, which is death, and gave us what we did not deserve, which is grace. So the Bible says that this young lady was now standing before Jesus. My brothers and sisters, we can show others that the sun will come out tomorrow when we get rested and we shine by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. Two, when we get reborn and shine by showing the gospel to others. That is to say, our talk needs to match up with our walk. I, I'll speak for myself. Mine don't always match up. <laughs> But that's where mercy comes in. And that's where grace comes in. The old people say, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in and shed a little life in heaven, filled my soul. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Not was a sinner. I am a sinner. And every day I need the grace of God to cover me. Third and finally, after I get reborn and share the gospel with others, and after I get rested and share the gospel with others and reborn, and show the gospel with others. Third and finally, I must get re-energized so that I can shine by shining the gospel on others. The lady was standing before Jesus. Jesus stood up and said, where are your accusers? And she looked around and she said, there is none. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. My brothers and sisters, We are children of light. If you remember a piece about this church, it says our mission is to be salt of the earth. That is, to be both a positive, be a preservative and an additive in people's lives. But then it says, we are also the light of the world. Brid Bridget, I'm going to pick on you a little bit. I remember I was here when she started coming back to church. And little by little, day by day, 
she began to shine more and more. She began to model and emulate the Lord Jesus Christ. So much so, when you see her today, there's a glow, there's a radiance about her life. I just believe that part of that radiance is she knows where Jesus Christ found her and she realizes that God gave her chance after chance after chance after chance and one day she was like that prodigal son, she came to herself and she ran back to the house of God. But that ain't the only Bridget's story. That's my story. And every one of us in here are prodigals. And we came to ourselves and begin to run home. But we didn't have to run far till we seen our father standing there with open arms welcome us back home. And not only did he welcome us, but he treated us as if we had never done anything wrong. That's what Jesus did with this woman. He said, I know what you've done. He said, but I came not to condemn the world, but the world through me might be saved. I don't know about you, but every chance I get, I just tell somebody, anybody, everybody, that their son will come out tomorrow. I know that the son will come out tomorrow. Not because I was drugged to church. Not because of what my grandparents told me my grandfather who was a preacher, my father who was a preacher, my mother who was an evangelist. No, that, that's, that, that's not it. One day, after hearing the gospel, that is Jesus Christ being crucified on all cross called Calvary. Stretched, hung high, stretched wide for me and for you. Dropped down in a hole and then lifted up. And I heard the Bible say, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw men unto me. I was there that day, and you say, no, you wasn't. Yes, I was. Because if you haven't been to Calvary, vicariously speaking, that is, made a spiritual trek to Calvary, you haven't saw the light. The songwriter said it this way, and I'm closing. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rode away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. The song where it says at last and did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred end for such a worm as I? Would 
sick for crimes that I had done that he groaned up on a tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Dear Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the and the burden rolled away. It was there by our Do y'all believe that? Stand to your feet at the cross. At the cross. At oh, where I first saw. And the burdens. Roll. Yes, and it was. Someone here that's been living in darkness. And before today, you didn't know that the sun will always come out tomorrow. But I stand before you as a living witness that the sun will come out tomorrow. And if you will come admitting and agreeing with God that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe you're here and you're already saved. But you've been spending a little too much time in the darkness. And you need to ask God. You need to repent and ask God to forgive you. I want to know that there is elders, there are ministers, if they would come forth here to pray with you. To let you know that there is no sin saving, rejecting Christ that is too big for God to forgive. Or maybe you're here and you're just looking for a church home. Peace Baptist is a great place to go to heaven from. And I'm sure Tom Brain would love to serve as your pastor. And we would love to embrace you as our brothers and sisters in the faith. If that is you, my brother, my sister, this altar is open to you now. And now is the day of salvation. Will any come? We'll wait on you. As the commercial says, the light of Jesus Christ is on.
give Minister Norman another round. Round clap of praise. As Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have everlasting life. Today, today was that type of celebration. How we saw, how people have demonstrated that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. And that sermon that Minister Norman preached just fell right in line. You know, and, and, and while I close, I do have some other great news. Great news is coming out of Peace Baptist. First of all, um, I know Deetra's not up here, but Deetra is a grandma. It's a grandma. And I know Brianna, I saw on the Facebook Live that she's watching. Brianna Connors, her daughter, just had a, a daughter. So we want to congratulate Brianna on uh, uh, having a beautiful baby girl and Deetra being a grandma. So congratulations. Also, um, uh, I, I got word that, uh, you know, Logan, Logan uh, uh, Cargow, he is in karate. And I guess on the 29th, he's going to go to a tournament. So we want to uh, uh, make sure that we keep him lifted up. But he's going to be our next Bruce Leroy, you know, the last dragon. You know, but uh, uh, we'll have more details on what time that would be. But um, uh, Alexis is uh, just, just wanted us to know, and so we can uh, uh, be there to support him. And also, if you did not know, we have a junior Olympian, Devin Thomas, made the Junior Olympics. Yes, I guess it runs in a family, right? No pun intended. It runs in the family. But uh, uh, he will be going to Des Moines, D D D Des Moines Iowa uh, at the end of the month, right? The end of the month. So uh, just keep him up in prayer. But, you know, he is uh, not only uh, is he a fast guy, but he's running for the Lord, I guess. So keep him in your prayers. Keep him in your prayers. And finally, I, do, uh, I, I didn't uh, I plan on announcing this, but uh, we have a, a, a person who, wants to join Peace Baptist and is our very own brother Damon Davis. Yeah, give him a yeah. You know, we, we thank him every week for being our sound minister, our sound person, I guess you want to say. And Damon, I think he thought he was already a uh, member, but I was like, wait, we haven't announced you being a member. You just can't walk into our house and claim that you that you are a member of our family. Peace back. No, no, you you are. But he, uh, I just wanted to announce that, and we'll uh, put him on our books. So I'll make sure that he is uh, put on our books as joining Peace Baptist. Thank you for your service, and now thank you for your membership. I mean, uh, yes. We do have a visitor. I think she just introduced herself to me. She was uh, brought in by by Damon. Damon already bringing in bringing in people. So I do not know her name, but um, yes.
So God bless all of you guys and all the generations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. May we all stand. God is doing something at Peace Baptist. We don't even know it, but he's doing something. And also, I want to make sure that we know that Children's Church is back on. And it's back on. We're going to try to have Children's Church at least three times a week. So uh, so bring your kids and your kid. I mean, a month. God's doing something. I said a week. So we're going to be here every week. I'll, I'll be down here. So you want to bring your kids? Uh, three times a month. Three times a month. So we are back in the Children's Church business. Someone said, if you build it, they will come, right? If you build it, they will come. It's already built. All we want to do is have you come, right? All right. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your son. The word tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we know that he has come out yesterday. He came out today, and we know that Jesus will come out forever. We thank you. Thank you for the message that's been, that was given to us, Father. We pray that as we continue to uh, um, walk this uh, life as of this week, Father, that you will show us literally that your son will come out tomorrow, Father. Protect us as we go throughout this journey. Be there, be there for us, Father. Allow us to continue to be that beacon of light. For you know that our, our vision is to be the light and the salt all of our surroundings, Father. Allow us to shine and reflect your son on everywhere and everyone that we meet. We'll, we'll forever give your son, Jesus, all of our honor, our glory, our belief, and our praise. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless, God bless.